All right, guys, welcome back to another video. We have updates today to talk about with some games are out there, new seasons as well, some interesting rumors, starting with this one here, that PlayStation may finally be working on bringing over native PlayStation 3 games to the backwards compatibility for the PlayStation 5. But before we do continue and jump into this, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like daily gaming news content and check out the link to my Spotify. It is in the description. So one of the Good things, I would say this generation, one of the best things, at least on the Xbox side of things, has been their backwards compatibility program. Now, of course, it isn't perfect. It isn't the entire catalogs from the OG Xbox all the way up until the Xbox one. But there are tons of games that you can go and check out on the Xbox, the Xbox 360, the Xbox one. Play them all on your Xbox Series X and S. And of course, if you have the X, you have the discs. You can pop them right in and they work. And there's upgrades to a lot of these games like an FPS boost or a Red resolution gain it is something that i've loved about this generation and the xbox series x and s just being able to play those backwards compatible games and playstation at the beginning of this generation seemingly weren't even going to have any backwards compatibility believing in generations but then quickly pivoting and bringing backwards compatibility for the playstation 4 people have been wondering where is that native backwards compatibility for their other consoles and the playstation 3 as you can really only play those right now via streaming and it looks like they are putting in some work here to actually make that a reality based off of this rumor. And I really hope it does come true because I would love to see this happen. It says here that Sony is rumored to be working on making some PS3 games natively playable on the PlayStation 5, addressing a major criticism on the console's compatibility. So some PS3 games currently require a persistent internet connection to be played and the possibility of native PS3 game support on PS5 as hinted by Credible Insider would be a big deal from a PlayStation fans out uh, this comes via the xbox era podcast and special nick saying that's at least according to credible insider special nick who alleged on the latest episode of the xbox era podcast that sony is reportedly planning to make ps3 games natively playable on the playstation 5 and the reputable legal sources apparently told him that sony is working on select playstation 3 backwards compatibility for the ps5 and of course they're not going to be able to bring everything over it's the same thing with xbox side of things that's not the entire 360 catalog that is there there's a lot of issues with licensing and being able to actually get those games running on the current architecture of these consoles especially with the playstation 3 if you remember when the ps3 launched they had that cell processor it was very good very powerful but it was very hard to get the power out of it until the closer to the end of the generation and Getting that compatible with what is currently being used to develop games on the PlayStation 5 is obviously a task that will take some resources that PlayStation probably it looks at it and looks at the games and thinks that not all of these games people are going to care about or play. So why invest a ton of resources into doing that? But of course, they have all of their first party stuff that I think a lot of people will love to play in terms of backwards compatibility. I mean, you think about some of the exclusives that are still stuck on the PS3. They list some of them here like Infamous. I mean, Infamous was a great series and I would just love for them to bring that back in any form, whether it's a new game. I think would be very cool. But if you can go back and play those on your PS5 now and get some upgrades to how they play, that would be incredible. Metal Gear Solid 4, of course, which is something we are seeing remakes with Metal Gear Solid 3. But Metal Gear Solid 4 has been stuck on the PlayStation 3. Will that game ever get off of that? This may be a chance for it. And games like Killzone 2. I mean, they could bring back the Killzone series in any way. I would absolutely be for, be for that. I mean, if you go look at the PlayStation three playstation 2 catalog with their first party stuff it, there were so many different games that they had it was in my opinion far better overall of a catalog than what they have currently right now on the ps5 so bringing those games back giving them some sort of boost or anything i would absolutely be all for that i think backwards compatibility and game preservation as i've talked about on this channel multiple times are, are very very important to me going forward with the way that the industry is going full digital Games are going to be lost forever. People aren't going to be able to experience some of the great games that people played with the older generations of consoles. And one of the things that could also play into that is, are they ever going to continue to sell 
physical games forever. And there was an interesting story here that did pop up yesterday. And that has to do with the store game, which is a UK game store, kind of like GameStop. And there was articles and information and news going around that they were going to stop selling physical games and even physical hardware, I believe, in their store, which would make you ask, well, what would they be selling if they're not going to be selling any of that? But there was also an update, but we'll go over the original story here. It says, Belgard High Street Chain Game will no longer sell physical games other than fulfilling pre-orders. That's according to a Gfinity report, which states that upcoming new launches will need to be pre-ordered before launch to be picked up in the store, which would be an absolutely crazy thing to think about because like like i said what would they be selling in those stores other than i guess merch and, and digital codes and things like that it says the same is true for the video game consoles the report goes on suggesting that outside of hardware launches you will not no longer be able to walk into a shop and buy a nintendo switch playstation 5 or the xbox series x and s off the shelf Eurogamer contacted game for more details and they absolutely came out and denied the report. They say Game has categorically denied the report published earlier today, which stated the chain would stop selling box games and consoles in these stores. In a statement provided to Eurogamer, the brand said it will continue to sell a wide range of box games in the store and online. And they say this reporting is categorically not true. Game continues to support the physical gaming market offering a wide range of physical games, hardware, software, accessories, and digital gift cards in stores online. And there was another update that a spokesperson for game parent company, Fraser Group, assured Eurogamer that there has been no change in the store policy at all with regards to the sale of physical games and consoles. And game's earlier statement had not addressed the potential for some kind of change to pre-order requirements or some other move that might have prompted the original Aaronist report this morning. So, if you saw these reports coming out, it seems to be false. I mean, they're still going to be selling games. They're still going to be selling consoles. And it just, it would be crazy if out of nowhere right now, they came out and, and just said, we're only going to be fulfilling future pre-orders going forward and we'll have nothing left in the store. It would really be the beginning of the end of all physical games, really, that you're going to be able to go out there and buy besides those retro stores that have gaming physical games from across all generations it is where we are moving that is the reality and for some people like myself the sad reality as someone who still likes to buy physical games and we are seeing kind of the negative things that can come out of a full digital era where games come off of servers you can't access them anymore online stores shutting down where you only have up until a certain point to purchase some of these games then they will be gone from existence forever especially if there is no physical release of them so that is going to be the future and i think people don't care about it now but once you start realizing there are certain games you never get to play anymore and, and then randomly you wanted to try it out that's when i think the reality is going to hit where it's going to be a completely different time in gaming when it comes to that all digital era all right let's jump over let's talk about a couple of other things so we got some engagement tracker results for the top weekly active users from Matt Piscatella and Circana. And you can see here, just the list will quickly go over it. Call of Duty, the HQ where you can access everything is the top ranked game on PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series. So Xbox is going to be a top ranked game and a top ranked series on the PS5, I think, going forward for the foreseeable future for pretty much ever. I mean, because Call of Duty is always a top ranked game. And then you have on PC, on Steam, Counter Strike 2, which is at top as well. And then the rounds out with these Fortnite, NBA, and Fortnite, and Roblox, and Helldivers 2 and Destiny 2 on Steam. And you kind of see what games get the most active users what games get the most attention it is those online games as a service games that always stay on the top of the list and this is why we do see playstation changing their strategy with trying to get more games as a service multiplayer games on there because they want to try to get up there on top of the lists for keeping people engaged in their content and not moving to something else and i mean we look at this list there's really nothing that stands out at a surprise x defiant has jumped up into the top 10 which is a brand new first person shooter from ubisoft that people kind of been touting as a call of duty competitor and it is a fun game there's still a lot of work that needs to be done obviously with the updates but it is definitely much closer to call of duty in the way that it plays than let's say something like a, a counter strike or so 
So we'll see how that game plays out, especially when the new Call of Duty does drop Black Ops 6. If it destroys some of the user base from XFI and who will jump over to Call of Duty Black Ops 6. It's going to be a very interesting year in the first person shooter genre and the competitive first person shooter genre as we have a bunch of big games that are coming out. So those are your weekly results at least for the top three and then you can go down further in the list and see everything else that is there but again not a big surprise as to what is on those lists they also do mention here that dark and darker jumped to number six on steam in a launch in early access on june 7th and deep rock galactic was eight up from 34 in the prior week so some big jumps there for some of those games now a game that a lot of people are waiting for is beyond good and evil 2 that game is still in development It is still going to be coming out. We just got the official unveil of Beyond Good and Evil, the 20th anniversary edition. But people are still wanting to see more about the long announced back in 2016 Beyond Good and Evil 2 game, which obviously has had a tough time in development for being in development that long. But Ubisoft did confirm on Monday that it is still on the way saying, yes, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is still in development and we cannot wait for you to discover more about Jade's past in the 20th anniversary edition and that's coming out on june 25th on the xs xbox one ps5 ps4 pc and nintendo switch it's a really cool game if you haven't checked it out this probably is the time to go check it out if you want to prepare for beyond good and evil 2 which fingers crossed next year we'll finally get that release and we will finally see some major gameplay for the game And when we jump back to some sales and stuff, let's talk here about Europe's best-selling game in May and their overall sales. So again, it's those same games that are at the top of the list, the yearly sellers that are always there. EA Sports FC 24 was on top of the list in May in Europe. That kind of wouldn't make sense with the whole Euro soccer tournament going on. Probably help push sales even more, but it sells well every single year. But they also say here that total software sales in May were down almost 17% compared to a year earlier, while console unit sales declined 40% year over year. And they say some of these declines can be explained by last year's blockbuster release of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which sold more copies in May 2023 than the entire top 10 managed last month. So there you have it. You have EA Sports FC 1, Grand Theft Auto 5 2, F1 24 3, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut 4, and Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door at 5. And then under that, you have something like Hogwarts Legacy still in there, Helldivers 2 in there, Red Dead Redemption 2, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and then Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. But the console sales falling 40% is really showing we are getting to that inflection point of. The consoles, we were, they're winding down, especially with the Nintendo Switch going into the Nintendo Switch 2. And then you think about the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and S. We are now four years into this, going into year five, into 2025. And the prices have not fallen. There's no bundles of like games being added in, really, with when you're buying an Xbox Series X or an S or a PlayStation 5. And that's something that you gen- we've generally seen every generation as we go through the generation Prices drop and there's a lot better deals out there for picking up these consoles. And we haven't seen that at all. And I think that's going to have an effect on the overall console sales as we get to the end of this generation leading into whatever comes next from Xbox and the PlayStation 6. Now, speaking of Call of Duty, we've mentioned it a bunch of times already on this show. Season 4 Reloaded has been detailed for Modern Warfare 3 and for Warzone. We will quickly go over this. The multiplayer fun, there will be some new maps so there will be a map called incline which is a mid-sized snow map based around a research outpost and transit facility in the mountains of urzikstan there will be some new modes you have havoc headshots only and mutation mutation sounds very cool it is part of the game's altered strain event saying once the chaos begins both teams must defeat the opposing side in a variety of tactical or grotesque ways teams switch sides at halftime humans become mutants and mutants become humans the team with the highest score wins so that sounds very cool and then there's this one which there's been some screenshots of it and it looks really good it is the new bit party playlist modifier 
will arrive in season four and it features pixel art inspired version of favela called bit vela and basically in this playlist you eliminate enemies which inflates your own operator's head from small to medium to large and then you get eliminated and your operator's head will reset back to small they say the larger your operator's head the more points you'll earn for eliminating enemies in team deathmatch picking up tags and kill confirm and holding the objective in hard points in domination bigger heads capture flags more quickly that to me just sounds like a ton of fun i will definitely be checking in and playing that playlist and just the pixel art i love pixel art so seeing that in call of duty is gonna be cool they say the Vortex, which is a mosh pit playlist, will include a new Das Gross map, Variant 2. Zombies is adding a new wave of based combat challenge in the form of unstable rifts. Several can appear per match and squads have to race to be the first to enter them. And they say upon entering an unstable rift, operators will face off against increasingly intense waves of enemies until completing the challenge or failing in the attempt. And completing the unstable rift resets the cooldown on all your insured weapons and schematics so you can head into the next match equipped with your best setup and then in Warzone, the dna bomb a pop-off power plant in new york sand has detonated creating new pathways around the point of interest and leaving behind a toxic chemical agent and then there's a bunch of other stuff here limited time mutation resurgence and mutation buyback modes will have players expose operators to a variety of mutant abilities and a powerful new weapon located within loot hot zones and bunkers will come with more than the traditional five allowed attachments so all of this is coming out season four, which launches tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Looks like a very fun update and uh, some playlists that I will be checking out and playing. All right, jumping over here, just a couple more quick things, just some interesting stuff. As we know, Starfield has mods available to it. You can get it on console as well. And it is just there's some really cool stuff that comes out of these mods especially playing basically an entire star wars game now there's a new mod here for xbox players here where you can actually go in and use star wars lightsabers in starfield and there's a video if you're watching the video my video you can see it and you can go check out the link in the description if you want to see more about it but it's super cool you can actually get lightsabers there's going to be a skill added in the combat skill tree for it and all you have to do is go ahead and download that mod and there's a couple of things you have to check off before you can get it but awesome stuff i mean the mods in starfield are just beginning of course there was the controversy with them charging seven dollars for like new quests and stuff it was, that stuff was ridiculous and hopefully that all gets under control but the actual mods people are creating for this game, they need to foster them because there's going to be some amazing stuff coming out of it. And this entire Star Wars stuff, even with this lightsaber, is just the beginning of we are seeing what people are going to be able to do. But this looks awesome. You can create whole new games with some of the mods that people have been adding to Starfield. And then finally, Bioware, Dragon Age, the Veil Guard is coming out this year. And I think it looks really good. I'm hoping this is a return to form for Bioware and for Dragon Age from the previews we have been seeing it does kind of sound like that but as you remember when this game first got leaked or talked about it was called Dragon Age Dreadwolf which I actually think is a cooler name than the Veilguard but now we know why they changed the name and it does make sense they say as we were building this game it became really clear that it was less that we were trying to make the veil guard and more like the veil guard was taking shape as we built the game solas is still a central figure in it he's still a significant character but really the focus shifts to the team and he says we realize dreadwolf suggests a title focus on a specific individual whereas the veil guard much like the inquisition focuses more on the team so, of course, that's why they changed the name. It's going to be very team-based, and we've seen already the videos with everybody in that game and the interactions and everything. So, it looks really cool. I Like I said, I hope this is a return to form coming out this year so we don't have to actually wait very long before we do get our hands on it and play the game. As I did say, it was releasing in fall of 2024, but I'm going to end the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.